So this is part two of citing and referencing using the Harvard style. In part one, I explained how the why it is important to cite and reference, and what's different about the the the. The, the Harvard style and how it should be applied. In this part, I want to actually look at the technical parts of how you actually do it and offer some do's and don'ts that are based on my experience as somebody who grades uh, assignments over the years. So first of all, I suppose the big question is what do these citations look like? There are numerous ways of citing various forms of material. So I focused on, cite on citing from the main sources that I encounter as a professional academic who has tended to spend a significant amount of time grading assignments. So these formats are peer-reviewed journal articles, books, chapters in edited texts, newspapers or magazine articles, and uh, information on web pages, for example. So before going into detail about how these appear differently, and these are all covered in detail in the supporting document that's men mentioned at the end of the text, it was mentioned at the start of part one of this uh, of, 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 of these uh, of these two videos. Um, it is important to point out that all citations have to contain the following information. So the and this is fairly basic. There's just key information that has to appear whenever you're citing the ideas or the concepts that belong to other people. The author's family name. So in my case, if you were citing me, it would be Cullen, not John Cullen, not Dr. John Cullen, not John Cullen, Maynooth University, or anything like that, just Cullen. The reason I mention that is I see all types of formats. So it's just the family name for an in-text citation. And the second thing is the year that the material that you're citing was actually published. Just the year, not the page number, which is when you're citing an idea. You do, however, use the page number when you're quoting, when you're directly quoting some material. So if you're paraphrasing, it's citing, and if you're actually using the material, you're putting some inverted commas around it, and you're still giving the author family name, the year of publication, and you're also given the page or the pages that the, the material was actually taken from. So how to cite references in the in the text of your thesis? If you're citing from one author, it's you know look at these two examples. Cullen, two thousand and six, says the conducting lit, uh, research begins from for, uh, uh, begins with a literature review. Conducting research begins with a literature review. Cullen, two thousand and six, within brackets. Doesn't really matter what way it is, as long as those two pieces of information are there. That is the author name and the year of publication. When you're citing from two authors, you can say conducting uh, research begins with a literature review. Cullen and and Elmore. If you're citing Writing from more than two, so three or more authors, you use the first name, the first named author, and then et al, which stands for, as Latin for, I think, and all. Um, so, you, and, and, and you may think, well, you know, you're, you're leaving out the names of the other authors in it, but that's an important signpost, as mentioned in part one of this video, to the reference section so somebody else can, uh, 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 can pick this up. If you're signing from a corporate author, that's a named entity, an institution, an organization, put in the name of the organization and the, uh, and the year of publication again. How to quote. Now, quoting is different. If you're using text that's written by somebody, uh, somebody else directly, three pieces of citation data are needed, as mentioned already. The author, authors, the year, and the page number or page numbers in which they appeared. So, for example, here is a statement of, um, you can see that Parker is included. He's the author, was um, is, is, is named within the text of that. So, you're just then referring forward to the year 2000 at page 75. Um, when you've got a long quote of, say, more than 40 words, this isn't 40 words then you you you, uh, you um you, you you should indent it make it different from the rest of the uh, uh the, the, make it stand out from the rest of the the, the written text the, there's an example of this in the uh, in, in in the written in the the document that's available from the ePrints directory, freely available, and I'll have details for that at the end of this video again. If you're citing an author which another author has uh, cited, you you basically say, you know, Foucault 1998 cited in Townley. That's if you can't go back to the original material, but it's always a good idea to go back to the original material if you're citing directly from it, if you can find it. If not, it's okay to do this. Here's one thing that you might have noticed, seeing as I meant, mentioned consistency throughout a lot, I've actually in one case, I've used, um, I've, I've put year 2000, colon 75, and in the next one, I've used 1993, comma, P91. So is this me being consistent? It is, but I am doing it for to demonstrate to you that there are different variations on Harvard that are used from institution to institution. You'll notice this if you're using um, some citation software or reference management software you go along, is that the, the, from journal to journal, there are little tweaks as you go along. My own personal preference is for the this one to use a year colon and then the page number or page numbers. But 
it doesn't really, I suppose to be honest, it from my perspective, and I think from the perspective of most academics, it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you choose one and you stick with it. You use it consistently, which demonstrates that you're not being sloppy in how you, in, in, in how you cite. The appearance of the reference list, it has to be arranged alphabetically by author. You wouldn't believe the amount of times that I've seen um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that I've seen reference lists that have been arranged non-alphabetically or with information other than the author coming first. It's a really easy way for seeing that somebody has been very, very sloppy and careless. And I'm not even going to mention certain coloured suites again, but there's a there's an example. Indent the second and subsequent lines of the bibliography. This is one of the reasons why I've provided a document to go with it, is that this will look different. You get a better sense of how this actually should be laid out when you look at it on paper. Books and reference list the information that be required, the names of the authors of the editor or the institution responsible if it's a corporate author, year of publication in brackets, title of publication and subtitle. All titles must be italicized or underlined. Now, sometimes you'll see people saying that titles have to be underlined or they have to be italicized, but I think from a proofreader or a copy setter's perspective, these both mean the same thing. A serious title and an individual volume, if anything, but in the edition, if it's anything other than the first, the name of the publisher and the place of publication. Sometimes when you open up a book, you'll see, you know, like a Sage publication saying it's published all over the world. I think, you know, with the convention that I've used, and I've never had any problems with this, choose the uh, the the, the place of publication that's closest to where you are geographically. So, so for Sage, that would be London because it's closest to Dublin as opposed to the New York or Delhi offices. But this generally depends on, 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 on where you are, of course. Page numbers, if applicable, but you only really use that if you're citing a chapter or a, 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 that's written for a book and a reference list. And there's an example of how to cite a chapter in the attached document. Journal articles, all names of the authors, uh, surname and initials are given names. So Huffman, LM, Cullen, J and Turnbull, S, you'll see in those examples there. It looks really bad if sometimes you're you're citing, you're citing Cullen J and then two ones down you're citing Cullen uh, you're, you're you're using somebody's first name again. Be consistent in the way that you do these things. Year of publication, title of article in single quotation marks, title of the periodical, which is the journal, underlined or italicized, the volume number, the issue or part number in brackets. So you'll see in the first one there, Huffman fifty is the volume number, two is the issue number, and then you can use a colon or, or, or a comma for the actual page numbers. The page numbers should, one of the, the, the big, I think, irritants for people when they're, uh, when they're grading things, if they see page numbers included in an in-text citation, when it's not a direct quotation, there's no need to put them in, that, in there. So, um, Newspaper articles and reference lists, all names of the authors, the article, uh, year of publication, the title of the article in single quotation marks, the title of the newspaper underlined or italicized, the date, and that's just the day number and the abbreviation of the month, so 13 Oct for the 13th of October, 18 Jan for the 18th of January, and then whatever page numbers they appeared on. Slight differences with that and, the mag and, and, and citing a magazine article in a reference list, and you'll see that again in the... Um, uh, in, 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 the, in the document that supports this base. Official uh, reports, government corporate reports and reference lists, corporate author name, that's the institution, the year in brackets, the title italicized or underlined, publisher, this may be the same as the corporate author, place of publication at the end. Internet sources in, I've got bibliographies here, but of course that covers reference lists as well. Um, author, year of publication in, uh, in, 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 in brackets, title of the page followed by online in square brackets, then available, colon, followed by the full URL that you got it on for, and then accessed, followed by the date that the material was seen or that you saw the material or used it on the website. Really, really, really urging huge amount of caution about using internet sources and bibliographies. And the main reason for this is that data which is made freely online should be treated with caution. Internet sources are often considered academically suspect. Um, I hope to shortly post a video on James Mandalias's radar process, which students can use to assess the quality of freely available online sources. So hopefully I'll have, a, have that available for but just really urging students to be very, very careful when they're using internet sources and bibliography. So finally, here's some important do's and don'ts, which are based only on 10 years of my experience of grading and assessing student uh, written assignment work. Do be consistent in how you apply citations and references. When I see it, um, inconsistencies, it's 
I think I've already discussed the, the type of reaction that a lot of academics have to it. Arrange your reference list alphabetically by author. A really easy way to demonstrate that you don't care about what your, <laughs> your reader is doing if you don't do that. Pay attention to keeping your formatting consistent. Make sure that your font colors, your punctuations, everything is correct. And pay attention to what you think are small details as you go through, such as you know whether you've put a bracket around your issue number or not. Don't mix up quotes and citations. One of the most common errors that I see are people putting in page numbers after citations and leaving out page numbers after direct quotes. Don't treat journal articles and books that you've access that you you've accessed online as if they're websites. You know, just because they're available to an online resource doesn't mean it's there. They're the same thing. You don't put in accessed after them. They are articles in printed journals, if you like, that just appear happen to be in an online format. Don't rely entirely on your citation software to do the job for you. I'll have a um, another um, uh, video on this shortly. And don't ever be attempted to plagiarize. I don't even want to look at the word plagiarize. The type of reaction that it gives to me. So there'll be more videos to come on learning and applying the radar approach to assess the quality of information and material that's found online. I also have a video on uploading cite note, uh, citations to EndNote Web from databases such as Business Source Complete and the Social Scientist Citation Index. And I hope to have something soon on tips for using EndNote Web Cite As You Write plugin for citing and referencing in an academic paper. So for updates on these uh, as and when they're available, you can subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter and my Twitter handle is at John underscore G underscore Cullen. And of course, don't forget to download this accompanying document to go with this presentation.